In the last video, we talked about polar coordinates and how we could plot points by using polar coordinates. Recall that polar coordinates are in the form of R theta. So we talked about um, taking rectangular coordinates x, y, and converting them into polar coordinates and graphing both of them and seeing that they're both at the same spot. We also looked at polar equations and converting that into a rectangular equation and vice versa. So in this video, we're gonna look at graphing polar equations. And so let's look at what a polar equation is. A polar equation is an equation whose variables are polar coordinates, um, and that's called a polar equation. The graph of a polar equation consists of all points whose polar coordinates satisfy the equation. So if we had an equation in rectangular coordinates, if we had some point x, y that satisfies it, when we plug in that point, that value for x and that value for y into the equation, it should come out to be a true statement. So same sort of idea here with polar equations. So we're gonna first look at the polar equation and we're gonna convert that into rectangular um, equation and see if we can determine what that graph looks like. And so before we do that, let's just recall that how we found um, values for our polar equations. Oops, stop that. So here we have that, we saw that x was equal to r cosine theta. We saw that y was equal to r sine theta. And we saw that r squared was equal to x squared plus y squared. So when we're working with these polar equations, we wanna try to manipulate the equation to give us values that are gonna fall out. So let's look at the following equation. So in this example, we have r is equal to two. So we wanna rewrite this. So I know that r squared is equal to x squared plus y squared. So since this is an equation, I can just go and I can square both sides of my equation to manipulate this to look like what I want it to look like. And so squaring our r squared and squaring our two, we get that r squared is equal to four. So let's go in here and now do substitution. We know x, r squared is equal to x squared plus y squared. So let's replace this r squared with what we just had, this x squared plus y squared. So we have x squared plus y squared is equal to four. So hopefully you can identify the shape of that graph um, if you can't, recall that this is a circle. This is a circle with a center at zero, zero and a radius of two. So recall, circles can be written in the form of x minus h quantity squared plus the quantity y minus k quantity squared equals r squared. When it's in this form, we can tell what the center is. The center is h comma k, and our radius is r. So in our equation here, x squared plus y squared, think of it as x minus zero quantity squared if you need to, plus y minus zero quantity squared. So our origin is the center of this circle. and our radius is equal to two. So we can now graph this equation. And so looking at the graph of this equation, centered at the origin, radius of two. So if we go up from the center, down from the center, left and right from the center, two units. We get points on the circumference of our circle. So notice that this r equals two. 
Recall when we were graphing these polar points, R is always two in this case, and theta is always changing. So if we graph the point where we have two zero, so we have little circles in here that kind of helps us graph. So we would go out to and have that point at zero. If we plotted a point, let's say at two pi six, so we would go to 30 degrees or sort of pi six. We would go out two units and we would be sitting here on that circumference of the circle. And we can continue to do that. So pi halves. So that would be on our y axis here. If we had two pi, this would be on the negative x axis at two two, three pi halves, et cetera. So we get the same shape using both the rectangular and the polar equations. So now let's look at another equation. So it's kind of the similar idea here. Here we're given that theta is equal to negative pi force. So recall, let's, um, we know what tangent of theta is. So let's take the tangent of both sides of this equation. And so if we took tangent theta, and tangent theta recall was, could be rewritten in terms of our x and our y value, and tangent theta was equal to the opposite, which would be the y value over our adjacent, which we saw was our x value. And so we have tangent theta here is equal to tangent of negative pi force. So like I just said, tangent theta is equal to y over x. So we have y over x is equal to tangent of negative pi force. So if we think about negative pi force, we would go down clockwise pi force. I know that tangent at my reference angle pi force is root two over two, but I'm in my fourth quadrant. So theta is contained in quadrant four here. And I know that tangent is negative in quadrant four. So this is gonna be equal to negative two root two. So usually when we graph equations, we have it in the form of y equals. So let's solve for y here. We can solve for y by multiplying both sides of the equation by x. And so we get y is equal to negative root two all over two times x. So y equals negative root two over two. So that's just some coefficient. Um, we'll approximate that in a second, which is the slope of our line. It's in the form of y equals mx. So I notice that this is gonna be a line that's decreasing at a rate of root two over two. So if we plug in negative square root of two over two into our calculator, we get that that is approximately 0.7. So we have here that y is equal to negative 0.7x. My y-intercept there I can see is at the origin, zero, zero. So that's also my x-intercept. And I know that I can think of this as my slope, which is again, negative 0 0.7, I can write that as negative 0 0.7 over one. So I'm rising, well, really falling negative 0.7. So I'm going down 4 point, or 0 0.7 and over one to the right. So just approximate that. So about 0.7, so about right here. And so if I go down, or let's say I go up, so I could rewrite this. This is the same thing as positive 0 0.7 over negative one. So if I go up, 
0.7, I would run over to the left, go over negative one. And so looking at this, I have my equation, which is gonna look the same if I graph this on the polar axis. So recall for polar coordinates, we had the pole, and then we had what looked like the ray going off to the positive, um, on the positive x-axis to infinity. And so let's think about this graph. In this case, we don't have any r in the equation. We only have theta. And so theta is always gonna be negative pi force. Let's do it in a different color. So that was the second coordinate on that point. And R is always gonna change. So if I look at negative pi force, notice that is going clockwise, pi force. And my R value my R value is changing. So if I have R is zero, that's gonna be at the pole, negative pi force. If I have R is one, I would go down one. On that line at negative pi force. If R was two, negative pi force, I would go on this line which is my terminal side of negative pi force, I'd have these kind of circles in here. I would go down another one. And so if I had, remember a negative R value, it crossed over from the terminal side following that same ray, um, on the opposite side. And so if I had negative one, negative pi force, I'd go over here. And so notice that we're getting the same points that we had on that line, y equals negative root two over two x. Okay, so let's just go over what we had just found. So there's this theorem here, actually, no. I have another example before I have those theorems for you. So let's look at the next example, r sine theta is equal to four. So recall r sine theta was just y. And so r sine theta was y, so we have y is equal to four. So recall that's just a horizontal line y is always our four value, there's no x in there, so we can just plot points, y always being four. So if I put in y is equal to one, I get four. If y was equal to zero, I have four. And again, I know I have this horizontal line. So now let's look at r sine theta equals four. So let's plot some points in here. So let's plot some points into that equation. So let's see. Let's solve for r in this case. So if I solved for r in this case, r is equal to four divided by sine theta. And let's plot some values and figure out what R is. So I know that if I, I can't plug in any value in here, that would give me zero in the denominator. Um, so let's plug it in, let's say pi halves. If I plug in pi halves here, I would get that r is equal to four all over sine of pi halves. Sine of pi halves is just one. So I have r is equal to four over one. r is equal to four. Oops, and I 
Got this backwards. So at pi half, so if I'm looking at it, the polar, there's my pole going clockwise, counterclockwise, pi halves, and then I would go up four. Maybe I should have pulled some graphing paper for polar coordinates, but you get the idea and you don't really need it. You can make it yourself. So let's look at another value. So let's say that we plugged in um, three pi halves. So if we go in here and we plug in three pi halves, well, recall that sine of three pi halves is negative one. And so we have four over negative one, which is negative four. So at three pi halves, that gets us down here. So I'm gonna rotate from my pole, three pi halves, which gets me to the negative y axis, but my r value is negative. So that forces me across the pole in the opposite direction going up four points. Maybe I should do um, another one. Let's say that we had another one that we know, um, sine at 30 degrees. So sine at pi six. So if I look at sine at pi six, and then we have four over sine at pi six. So R here is equal to four all over sine at pi six, which is one half. So think of this as four divided by one half, which is times the reciprocal two over one. So I have here that R is equal to eight. So if I go pi thirds or pi six, which is 30 degrees, and I look at my terminal side, and that would tell me I would be going out eight circles. So eight circles, I'm gonna be hitting. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, okay. Right here, we're gonna say that's eight. So we end up getting points on this line, this horizontal line. So for R sine theta equals four, we got Y equals four. So R sine theta equals a number is just a horizontal line at that number. So let's look at one other case before I bring that theorem to you um, that tells you about these equations and the shapes that you'll get. So in the next example in front of us, we have R cosine theta is equal to negative two. So recall our cosine theta, that was just equal to our x value. So x was equal to negative two. Recall if we have an equation in the form x equals negative two, that's just a vertical line at x equals negative two. Think of it if you need to as there's no y value in here. So our x value is always negative two and our y value is changing. So at negative two, zero, at negative two, one, at negative two, negative two. So any value I plug in for x, I'm always, I mean my y, I'm always getting x is negative two. So I have this vertical line. 
So again, we could, if we wanted to just show really quickly that if we plugged in values for theta, we would get values of R that would place us on this line, this vertical line. So R, let's solve for R here. We could do that by dividing both sides by cosine theta. We get R is equal to negative two divided by cosine theta. Let's choose some values here that we know for theta. I know that at zero, cosine of zero is one. And so negative two over one is negative two. So I would have theta is zero. So I'd be on this line right here, except my R value is negative. So instead of going positive two units, I'm going to start at the pole and go negative two units. If I plugged in, let's say, pi. So I know cosine of pi is negative one. So I have negative two over negative one, which is two. So if I rotate from my pole, pi, which gets me to this negative x-axis, then I would be going over two of those circles, which would place me right here. So you can choose other values if you want. Um, let's see. Let's say that we plug in, let's get something in that um, second quadrant. Let's do some theta that we know. And so I know three pi force, my reference angle is pi force, cosine is negative in that quadrant. And so I would get negative two all over cosine negative, my reference angle is pi force because I'm in quadrant two here. And cosine is negative. And so I have a negative over a negative is positive. So R is equal to two over cosine of pi force, which is root two over two. I can do some simplifying multiply by the reciprocal of the fraction in our denominator, which would give me two over root two. I can rationalize my denominator. So this gives me four root two over two, which is two root two. So looking at two, Um, times square root of two, I get that this is approximately 2.8. So going three pi force, that would get me here. I would have my terminal side of that angle and I would go up 2.8 approximately and I would get a point right here. And so again, I get the same line, which is vertical. Okay, so if we ever have something in the form of R cosine theta equals a number, that is gonna be a vertical line at that number. So the following theorem states, let A be a real number, then the graph of the equation R sine theta equals A, which we said that's the same thing as Y equals A, is a horizontal line. It lies A units above the pole if A is greater than or equal to zero, and it lies absolute value of A units below the pole if our A value is negative. If we're looking at the graph of our cosine theta, so that's the same thing in rectangular coordinates as X equals A, this is a vertical line. It lies A units to the right of the pole if 
our value of a is greater than or equal to zero, and it lies an absolute value of a to the left of the pole if our negative if our a value is negative. Okay, so that is trying to figure out and graphing some things by converting things into rectangular coordinates. So let's look at a couple more examples and then I'll give you some other types of graphs that you'll see when you're graphing these polar coordinates, which are kind of cool. And we will look at the form that you'll see what they look like as a polar coordinate and tips on how to graph these. So our next example here is R is equal to two sine theta. So recall, we're trying to convert this into rectangular coordinates. And so we're looking for things that look like X equals R cosine theta. We're looking at things that look like R sine theta. And we know that that's why we're looking for things that are R squared equals. So R squared, we can rewrite it as X squared plus Y squared. So let's manipulate this to get us an R squared. If we multiply both sides of our equation by R, notice here we have R squared is equal to two R sine theta. Well, we know from over here and just restating it that R squared is equal to x squared plus y squared. So let's rewrite this. R squared is x squared plus y squared. This is equal to two, but I also see R sine theta and R sine theta over here is equal to y. So let's replace that R sine theta with y. So hopefully you can recognize that this is a circle. We have both an X squared term and a Y squared term. Um, and both our coefficients in front of the X squared and the Y squared are the same number. So I wanna get this in the form so I know what the center is and I know what the radius is. And so I notice that I'm gonna to have to complete the square. So first thing we'll wanna do here is we wanna get our x terms together. There's only one, the x squared, and the y squared terms together. So let's say x squared plus y squared. Let's subtract 2y on both sides of the equation, minus 2y, I'm going to leave some space here, equals 0. So I need to complete the square here. I want this, recall, a circle is in the form of x minus h quantity squared, which we have right here x minus zero quantity squared, if you want to think of it that way, plus y minus k quantity squared. So we need to um, complete the square on my y terms. And so we're thinking of a number to make this a perfect square. So y plus or minus something quantity squared. So that's the same number that we would add to get negative two, we wanna multiply that to get some constant here. Add something in here. If I add something to one side of the equation, we gotta add it to the other side of the equation. So if you don't remember how to complete the square, you might wanna go back and review this if this isn't um, ringing some bells, if you didn't remember, but now it's um, coming all back to you. So that number that we're adding to get negative two, um, basically take that number, that B value in front of the Y, which is negative two, divide it by two and square it. So negative two divided by two is negative one. Negative one plus negative one is negative two. And now we wanna look at that value, negative one quantity squared, which is one. So we're gonna add one to both sides of our equation. And so now we have this perfect square here. We said that minus one was the same number we multiplied to give us one and add to negative two. And we have our x squared here plus, and this is now equal to zero plus one, which is one. So this is now in the form that I know what my center is. My center is zero and my, um, my value of that center is positive one and R is equal to one. 
So we can graph this by um, plotting our points. We know our center is at zero, one. So when X is zero, Y is one. And so from that center, we wanna go up one to the left one, down one, and to the right one of that center. And we get our circle. Okay, so let's look at another example. This time I have r secant theta is equal to negative four. So let's look at this. Let's first um, rewrite this. We know that secant theta is the same thing as one over cosine theta. So let's rewrite this equation. So we have r is times one over cosine theta is equal to negative four. So let's get cosine theta um, out of the denominator. Let's get r by itself. And we can do that by multiplying both sides of our equation by cosine theta. So now we have r is equal to negative four cosine theta. We tend to like it as r squared. So we can manipulate it to be r squared because it's an equation. We can multiply both sides of our equation by r. And so we get r squared is equal to negative four r cosine theta. So same sort of idea, r squared is equal to x squared plus y squared equals negative four r cosine theta, but r cosine theta is equal to x, so we have negative four x. Going to get everything to one side of the equation. I notice that again that this is a circle, so let's add four x to both sides. So I have x squared plus four x. I'm going to leave some room here because I notice I'm going to need to complete the square, so I'm going to add something in here to make that a perfect square plus y squared is equal to, well, I have zero on the side of the equation, but I'm gonna add something to this side to make that a perfect square for my x term. So I'm gonna have to add that same number to the other side of the equation. So I'm thinking of what would make that a perfect square. So the same number that I would add to get four, I'm gonna square it. So the same number I would add to get four, divide that number by two, I get two. So two plus two is four two squared is four. So I'm gonna add four to both sides of this equation. So I have x squared plus four x plus four, which is a perfect square. The same number I multiply to get four and add to get four is two. So that can be rewritten as x plus two quantity squared plus y squared is equal to four. So now I can tell that my center is at negative two, zero, and my radius is at two. And so I can graph this now. And so this polar coordinate r secant theta equals negative four is equal to the center, centered at negative two, and my radius is two. So from my center, I am going to go up to, down to, left to, and right to. Okay, so with what we had just saw in those types of equations, notice that those were both circles. And so technically this was not quite in the form, but notice when we had solved for R, we had R is equal to some number. Oops, it's negative four cosine theta. And back at the other equation, we had R is equal to some number sine theta. And so there's a theorem that can help us identify, looking at the polar equation, what shape it's going to be. 
Um, and before we do that, let's kind of look at what we're doing. Those types of equations, let's look at it um, by using a graphing utility so we don't have to look at all these um, different equations and rewriting them. But let's look at the similar form of that what we just had. So let me pull up Desmos. I have it all ready for us. Okay, so here we have Desmos. I have a lot of different equations written in here, but I will have right now the equation R equals sine theta. And so notice that shape. My R or my value in front of sine theta, that coefficient's one. And so notice it's in the um, torus circle is um, where centered is that line that goes through it symmetrical is on the Y axis. My center here is at zero one and my radius is one. So let's look at what happens if I put two in front of my sine theta. So notice here, my center is at zero, um, two, and my radius is two. So up two, right two, down two, left two. If I put R equals three sine theta, well, by what's going on here, it looks like my center is gonna be at zero three, and my radius is gonna be three. Let me turn off the other ones for a second. So here, the green is zero, three is our center. And notice that our radius is three. So let's say that we have a negative in front of our sine theta. That coefficient in front is negative. We'll notice that just flips it across the x-axis, the center, um, it's symmetrical with the y-axis. My center now is at zero, negative one, but my radius is still one, the absolute value of negative one. If I plot negative two sine theta, notice here, center is at negative, uh, zero, negative two, and my radius is the absolute value of negative two, which is two. So now let's look at the cosine values. So R equals cosine theta. R equals cosine theta, notice it's a circle, but it's symmetrical across the x-axis. Notice my, my value coefficient in front of cosine theta is one, and my center is at one, zero. My radius is one. If I look at two cosine theta, my guess is that the center is gonna be at two zero and my radius is gonna be two, which it is center two zero, radius two. So three cosine theta, notice our center is at three zero and our radius is three. So similarly with our sine values, if the coefficient is negative, it's just gonna swap it in the negative direction, in this case of the x-axis. And so this point here, which is our polar equation, which is r negative equals negative cosine theta, we have our center at negative one, zero, and our radius is one. Where if we do r equals negative two cosine theta, our center now is at negative two, zero, with a radius of two. Okay, so after exploring and looking at those graphs really quickly, now we can say the following. So suppose A is a positive real number, then we can say that R equals 2A sine theta. The circle um, has is a radius of A. Um, and it looks like this is actually odd. The center is at zero A in the rectangular coordinates. If we have R equals negative two A sine theta, it's saying the radius A has a center at zero negative A. R equals two A cosine theta, we have the radius A. 
uh, um, center at A0. So it's a center, the circle passes through the pole. Okay, let's go back there and look at what we just said because I'm questioning that. That's not what we just saw, was it? Let's see, maybe it was. So R equals 2A sine theta is saying my center is gonna be at A, zero A. So R equals two sine theta, it's saying that that A value is one. Okay. Yeah, so I I think that 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 might be off. We saw here that our center was and a value was three, and our radius was three. That's not what we saw. Well, let me look into that because that's what I pulled from the book. I'm gonna look into that real quick. So I'm gonna pause the video. Okay, so the, that was correct. My problem was when I was looking at this, I was thinking of these tick marks as one, not really looking at the numbers above. These tick marks in here on this Desmos, this is here, our graph is R sine theta. Our center notice is these tick marks are half. So our center is at zero one half and our radius is one half in here. And so here at R equals two sine theta, think of it as dividing this value, this coefficient by two, that's gonna get us where the radius is. And so, this value two divided by two is one. So my radius is one I'm, or my center is um, zero one and my radius is one. So if I look at the three, if I divided the coefficient of three, that would be three halves. And so notice one half, one, three halves. So zero three halves is a center and it's going up the radius. Um, the radius is three halves. So that negative one in front divided by two, that's what it's gonna give us the center. It's gonna be zero, negative one half, and my radius is one half. So R equals negative two, center is zero, <laughs> um, negative one, and my radius is one, absolute value. So same sort of idea here. So just take the coefficient, divide it by one half, and the radius is that length, and the center is for cosine, we're gonna go to the right if our value in front is positive. So it's gonna be at one half zero, radius one half. This R equals two cosine theta. So our center is gonna be at um, one zero, and our radius is one. So sorry about that. I was thinking of that as again, units of one. So going back over to this, that description is correct. I probably, I wouldn't like to, I don't like to think of it that way. Like I was just saying this value here. So if we had R is equal to, let's say just A cosine theta, then my center, is gonna be at a halves zero. And my radius is gonna be the absolute value of a over two. And for r equals a sine theta, think of it as the center so my y value, so one half of a, so it's gonna be zero a halves. 
and my radius is going to be the absolute value. Those are absolute values of a over two. Okay. So I think I'm going to pause the video before we get into that next part, actually not pause the video. I think I'm gonna restart the video to a new video for this new portion of this section, which in our textbook is 10.1.